Hello and welcome. I'd like today to talk about radiant energy and what we can understand uh, under the term radiant energy. And I'd like to uh, reference first to Tesla's patent where he provided some insight about how radiant energy can be harnessed. In a nutshell, the radiant energy receiver is an insulated conductor connecting to an electronic device, capturing this energy again then in a capacitor and then used for a load. If you look at um, Charles Proto's elementary lecture book, he defines the radiant energy, or would say he understands the way radiant energy is working and defines it as a dielectric field. So the electric field has two components in each conductor. One is a magnetic, the electromagnetic field, and also by circulating or vibrating in a conductor it creates also a dielectric field. So what we see here are the TEM or the transfer of waves in a conductor. Here we have two conductors next to each other. They can be a coax cable, they can be two cables together. And we have them here circular around that um, conductor. And we have dotted lines here in between going, which is marking the dielectric field between these two conductors. In the industry or in electric engineering, radio engineering, this field is uh, reduced or is uh, suppressed by using coax cable which are shielded so that this field is not um, actually produced. As I shown in my previous videos, this field can be quite disruptive if not kept in check if it's under um, in, in, in this um, high power conditions as it is with Tesla coils existing. You have to keep it in check because it can be very dangerous not only to humans but also to the electronics. The dielectric field is a natural way of transmission of energy. So technically our sun is our radiant energy provider. It's an electromagnetic wave light and yes it is producing dielectric fields as well and we can receive this. We use solar cells to change the electromagnetic waves into electrical signals which we can store then in batteries or in capacitors. Um, nature, trees, humans, every living organism is harnessing the same kind of energy and converting it. So from conductor point of view we see that we have then the electromagnetic waves and the dielectric waves. Now the question then becomes why, uh, how is then the possibility that we can um, harness this kind of energy? Well, we can do that by the potential of um, the differences between ground that has been done in the past where um, the electric potential was used which is also related to the dielectric field which comes also from the sun because the sun is producing this kind of potential on uh, the earth where it uh, creates it in the atmosphere, in the molecules, in the atoms where ions are produced and they are creating then a different layer on the surface on our planet and that is then creating a potential difference. If you look about the earth that means we have then um, um, the so-called Schumann frequency and that is actually created by the, um, the lightning around the globe which is around 7 to 13 Hertz uh, currently available. This is an electromagnetic wave and because of this discharge of um, this energy we have in our atmosphere dielectric energy available which is perceived by every, every human organism. So they are important in the way we are using them and they are important to nature. However, if they are on high value, especially when voltage is high, that means when the current, and you know about the skin effect, when the frequency is high and voltage is high, that actually the energy is not inside the conductor anymore. The energy is on a surface or outside of the conductor emanating around into the environment and that when it becomes um, kind of 
dangerous. So I want to demonstrate that with you with my little device I have here. This is my standard device I was using all the time as my 6.5 to 6 volt load. The wire here is only one wire and it's insulated. There is no uh, physical connection via a conductor to the device that is not required at all. This device has also a lot of other dielectrics. Here the PCB board is dielectric. The housing or the optic of the LED is dielectric and the casing or let's say the, uh, the housing of the capacitor is a dielectric. So what I want to demonstrate to you is that any work or let's say any functionality of this device, let's say storing energy and showing that energy is available, comes via the dielectric and not via a conducting environment as I did demonstrated to you via the globe by touching it. Here I touch the dielectric and it will work. So I'd like to show you that now in details. So I have now my device here and as uh, I said before, the dielectric is the important part here. So if I touch it here on the wire, as you can see, it will illuminate. If I put it down, it's not working anymore. So that works also when I touch only the capacitor. Look. You can see that here. It touched the capacitor. It works well. It works when I touch. Let's say touch it's a PCP board. It works very well. And the wire of course as well. It's quite strong actually. But it's very important that the receiver or the on is not influenced. So they technically my antenna here needs to be able without distraction to receive. However, if I touch that again, I become part of the antenna. Let's see if it works here. And it works again. So your direction where you actually place and your radiant receiver needs to be without distraction. So technically you have to think about not only conducting material but specifically also non-conducting materials for your radiant energy receiver because they will impact the functionality of your radiant receiver and that makes it a little bit more complicated because most of the time we were thinking about only uh, put the conductor away because that influences the frequency of your coil and so on but that is here for radiant energy uh, even more complicated it can go closer we can see that better yeah not working touch the capacitor it's working again so I cannot touch the con uh, conductor I can touch only the um, insulation or the dielectric to make it work. That's why I have, yes, this cable is connected. Yes, there is wire connected inside. However, it's insulated and uh, I can only make it work when I touch the insulator. I cannot make it work when I touch uh, actually the, the pathway on the opposite side. It's not happy for me doing that. It has to be isolated from from ground. It has to be isolated from any other circuitry. So this this um, harnessing energy system needs to be completely isolated from any any other conductor in order for you to provide you with the energy. You can store it in capacitors. You can store it in batteries and can use it this way. Um, so this was. Um, a bit of a glance to give you some information about in which direction you can go and it doesn't matter uh, what it is but very important you always need to use capacitors because the dielectric is stored in capacitors and and so on so s capacitors are part of the dielectric where we store in en energy and they are working with it as well so without capacitor this one would not work as exactly as it is described in Tesla's patent. And I thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye.